Hello and welcome to another maintenance video from the engine bay. Last season we had a few problems with the muffler. The muffler is actually mounted on the frame for the engine and it managed to vibrate loose. The other problem we had was occasionally the engine would overheat and I suspected there was something wrong with the heat exchanger. So I wanted to dismantle it and give it a good clean out. Seeing as these two things are on the same system, I thought I'd tackle that as a whole job and make a maintenance video out of it. However, to get to these parts, I had to also dismantle the exhaust system, the elbow, um, the oil cooler and other parts of the engine. So what was supposed to be a 10 minute video turned out to be a 40 minute epic. So what I've done is break it down into three separate chunks which broadly covers the cooling system on our Volvo TMD22 or Perkins Prima if you want to be picky about it. So part one is dismantling and cleaning the muffler, the elbow and the turbo. Part two will be dismantling and cleaning the oil cooler. And part three will be dismantling and cleaning the heat exchanger. So the cooling system can be broadly separated into two separate parts. There's the internal freshwater system and the other part, which is the salt water, is pulled in from the sea, is circulated through the heat exchanger and then takes the heat with it and then eventually expelled through the exhaust with the exhaust gases. So how does it do this? Well first it gets pulled in through a sea strainer which filters out any large contaminants like seaweed, jellyfish, um, shrimp, um, stones, pebbles, things like that. The seawater then travels to the water pump which basically circulates all the salt water through the system. It then travels to the heat exchanger where it travels through tiny tubes through the fresh water system and cools it down. The fresh water system circulates within the engine in a continual loop, cooling the engine down. The seawater then passes through other small tubes in the oil cooler where the oil is circulated around it. Then the cooler engine oil is then circulated in the engine uh, using the same principle to cool it down. The seawater is then passed through more tubes, taking the heat from the engine with it. The seawater then passes through more pipes up and over an anti-siphon system and back into the exhaust elbow where it mixes with the exhaust gases and cools them down too. Finally, it enters the muffler where it helps to cool down and dampen the sounds in the engine. So working backwards, the first thing I had to do was remove the muffler to get the bracket re-welded. And this meant dismantling the exhaust system. You can see where it's basically come off there. I took the muffler box off um, a while ago to get it re-welded and I haven't put it on because I wanted to eventually get to the heat exchanger. But usually this is connected via a pipe to the muffler which is mounted down here. So the next job on the list is the exhaust elbow. Um, this was replaced along with the turbo about a year and a half ago. Um, and it's worth taking it off just to give it a clean because the carbon deposits build up there and the corrosion can start and uh, it's, it's quite hidden until you get a hole in it. Um, but it's only held on by four bolts so I'm going to take it off and then give it a clean with some aquifurter uh, and then put it back. And it will give me a chance to inspect the turbo as well and have a look inside and make sure that's okay. So I need to take this off and then I can get to the bolts. After all this time it kind of seals itself on a bit so I'm just trying to loosen it up without obviously splitting it. I'm going to have to get a spanner into this one because I can't get to it because of the pipe and the pipe seems to be caked on there with a bit of uh, salt. I'm just going to be careful not to damage the gasket here. Have a look at that that's not good so then I cleaned out the exhaust elbow with a wire brush and some hydrochloric acid solution okay so I've been on the dock and I've given it a bit of a scrape out and used some hydrochloric acid to clean it out and uh, not too bad a job really but what I have noticed is a bit of corrosion on the uh, the hose connector 
and I've noticed a few wires bonding wires that are coming loose so uh, I'm going to have to make sure that they're all connected up but it's not too bad I can still reuse it but I'm going to order a, a spare one I think for the next time so once that was off I could then dismantle the pipes and get to the actual heat exchanger but before I got to the heat exchanger I thought it'd be worth checking the pipes around the water pump to check for calcium deposits and any other contaminants now I've got the exhaust elbow off it means that I can get to the heat exchanger a bit easier um, so I think the next job is I'm going to take this off and just check the pipes and make sure that they're all clear it's got to be fresh water in there because I flushed it through with clean water a few weeks ago That's interesting. It's pebbles and bits of grass. So I'm just going to check this uh, feeder pipe as well because we had quite a lot of calcium in this end of the uh, of the cooling water system. I'm going to mark that with a marker so I know which way the uh, plate goes back on. Last time I did this I sheared one of the, uh, the bolts off so I'm being extra careful. Actually that looks fine so I know how difficult it is to replace that. In fact last time I changed it I actually managed to damage the new one so I'm going to leave it um, although I'll have to replace the gasket. Be so careful not to scratch these things. So I'm just going to give it a clean up, um, get a new gasket on it and then reinstate it because if you saw my last video on how to change an impeller you realize it doesn't always go according to plan and it didn't very much so so it was changed six months ago I think it's going to be okay for another six months. So I'll just give the housing a bit of a clean up and the face plate and just put that back I think with a gasket so I'm just going to put this a bit of tissue here to catch any screws in case they fall down. Just dab the very small amount of liquid gasket. So really it's just sticking in place while I screw it in. I think what happened is the previous owners put this on upside down and it's actually managed to wear in on the angle so I'm just going to reinstate it how I found it. Um, the other thing I do is put some anti-seize paste on. It's technically not necessary but it just stops anything seizing in place because last time I took the plate off I managed to snap the head off which was a laborious job if you ever saw that video actually the other thing I'll do while I've got these pipes off is give it a bit of a, a clean and spray paint around here a bit of degreaser Okay, so now I'm going to take the, the outlet off. So the water basically goes in there and then through the heat exchanger, through the old cooler and then back out here and eventually through the anti-siphon tube up there. This one's a bit more tricky because it's around a 180 degree bend. Okay, so it's a bit stuck in there so I'm just trying to, ah, there we go, break the seal a bit. I thought these were pebbles, but I think they're actually calcium deposits because they, they break up quite easy. calcium deposits. Mm -hmm. 
So before moving on to the heat exchanger, I thought I'd take the opportunity to give the turbo a bit of a clean. This is fairly carbonized up as well. There's the wastegate, which goes down to there. And there's the turbo fan. So I'm just going to give that a, a bit of a clean out. I'm just going to give it a spray out with some oven cleaner and then just gently go around with a, a soft wire brush. So that's brought it up really nice and clean actually, better than I thought. So the turbo's running nice and freely. There's no deposits left on the inside. So I'm quite pleased with that. Finally, I'm going to give it a spray with some fogging spray, which is what I use in the carburetors of the outboards. All I'm going to do is put a, a minimal amount in just to coat it, to stop it rusting up over winter. And hopefully that should preserve it. I'm just putting some inside the wastegate as well, just on the inside, and that should prevent it getting rusty over the winter, So, because we've still got a few months before we start running this engine properly. All diesel engines should be run really hard and hot for at least five minutes after a long run, just to burn off that sort of, uh, that residue buildup and that soot. Um, and it burns it all off and pumps it out the exhaust, so it keeps the turbo and the elbow nice and clear. So the next stage was to move on to dismantle and clean the heat exchanger. But before I could get to that, I also had to remove the oil cooler. Judging by what I found on the end cap, which is calcium deposits and even a bit of liquid gasket string, I knew it was going to be quite a messy job. So thanks for watching. Check in for part two, where I'll be dismantling and cleaning the oil cooler. And, and then for part three, I will be dismantling and cleaning the heat exchanger too. So that's it. I hope it was useful and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks in particular to our patrons who make these videos possible. Um, if you would like to contribute to my beer fund, then just follow the link to the Patreon page in the description below.